vote for slaveholders, mm -hmm. um, pamphleting, uh, we're going to write letters, we're going to make brochures, we're going to go on the lecture circuit, we're going to directly impact people um, through political means and, and um, that you know, black abolitionists like um, Henry Highland Garnett and Samuel Ringgold Ward to, uh, uh, to, to some degree were of that persuasion, the, the political abolitionists and the Tapan brothers who were millionaire New Yorkers who started the American Missionary Society, they were white abolitionists, they were, they were also political abolitionists. Mm -hmm. They didn't, many people did not think that moral suasion was going to work. Yeah. And I don't believe, and it didn't work. Yeah. I mean, what ended slavery was, you know, war, Direct political, political action, action. Mm -hmm. right? So Bibb w became a political action mm -hmm. abolitionist. Of course, that, that movement broke in two in 1842, huge rift. Um, you know, Frederick Douglass was aligned with the Garrisonians um, down here in Boston, huge rift between both the black and white abolitionists. So there was, you, you, his ideas changed as he grew older, as he um, got more and more involved uh, directly in the movement. But at the end of the day, I would say that both political abolitionists and the moral suasionists had one objective. Yeah. And the ob yeah. objective was for, and worked, and both groups yeah. worked. I mean, the, the Tapan brothers, they founded the American Missionary Society. That society built black colleges, hospitals, universities, Huge. you know. Yes. Um, and the Garrisonians were extremely influential to and, and committed um, to, to the movement. Coming, coming over in Canada, uh, where Bibb lived, he came in 1850, but he was already familiar with the terrain mm -hmm. because he used to come over okay. since 1842 all the time and would take fugitives over to Ontario um, when they came through through Michigan. Um, he he had this idea that land that you had to own land, yes. and there's a reason for that because at that time to engage in the political process, meaning. Um, if you wanted to vote, you had to be a freeholder. You had to have property. So he was always encouraging people to buy land, to own land, to have, you know, this amount of of of, of acres of land. Because I, I I'm not sure how many acres one had to have in order to vote, but you needed a, a certain amount of acreage. So so th that was a big thing with, with the bibs. And Mary was also critical um, in, 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 in this too. She, she was of critical importance in the whole development, I would say, of her, her husband's idea, uh, the, the, the tra trajectory of his thinking, of his, um, you could see how his, the evolution, the, how his ideology in terms of uh, black liberation and emancipation, how it kept evolving until the day he died. Yes, the whether it's okay, education, um, land ownership, temperance, um, own, owning one's business, you know, be becoming an entrepreneur, building schools. Each year there was something that was added to this idea or, or to this thought process of how we are going to achieve racial uplift, how we are going to achieve full emancipation. And, um, and very early on, I think by the time he died in 1854, it wasn't so prominent, but at the beginning, this whole idea of um, emigration, Emigrate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. leaving, stepping out, migrating from the United States. Of course, Canada was the place to come. The easiest um, place it's, to get e to. It's easy to get to. Most uh, most of Canada um, spoke English. Mm -hmm. You're coming from the United States. You're speaking English. Um, the tem the temperature, the climate is very 
similar mm -hmm. to the northern states and so on. So he was a big promoter of Canada, a huge promoter. Not his wife so much, because once she got here and started, you know, going through the, the discrimination, she really wasn't got complete. discouraged. She got really discouraged. Um, but but Bib was in love with Canada for a, a, a long time and promoted it and would write back to the States, to people, telling them to come. But he also promoted Jamaica. Hmm. He said Jamaica is a, a good place to go. He also promoted Haiti, especially when Theodore Hawley um, became associate editor of The Voice of the Fugitive. And Theodore Hawley was this young, enthusiastic Vermonter, free black from Vermont, who was um, very, very influenced by Henry Babe, came from Vermont to Windsor to help Henry Babe um, with the newspaper. And he, um, Holly, he was ordained as an Epi Episcopalian minister and eventually left North America and went to Haiti mm -hmm. and died there. Lived there for something like 50 years, became Bishop of Haiti, uh, built teachers' college, um, uh, nursing schools, hospitals, Theodore Holly, another giant that, that we have forgotten, and left North America mm -hmm. and, and lived, had his family in Haiti. So Haiti, they, they promoted Haiti, they promoted Jamaica, they also promoted Central America. So the point I, I, I start off with is that immigration, they, were, they said, you know, every black person should leave the United States. The United States is hell on earth. Toxic. Do yeah. not stay there. Mm -hmm. Leave. Um, but I think towards the end of his life, he was not so much big on the immigration to, let's say, outside of the continent because come to Canada yeah it's great stay in Canada because your four four million brethren are still in slavery you don't want to abandon them yeah. while because you're on the continent you can still have that impact and that influence on on your lives and you help have them more and help, help them, them escape yeah. um, because you know a, another thing that we have to bear in mind is that sometimes people think well, you know, they're the enslaved people and they're the free black people. How do they communicate?